Hi all, my name is Seth Svoboda, and um, today I thought I'd take a stab at, or at least try to help shed some light on um, remote I.O. communication with a PLC-5. Um, this is old, old networking stuff that... Uh, uh, as an automation engineer, you pray never to have to deal with. You hope that you get to just rip it out and start over again. But with that said, I thought I'd take a stab at, um, uh, you know, a PLC5 program using remote I.O. So if, uh, if you ever had to, say, troubleshoot something like this, you'd at least have a fighting chance of getting them up and running. So, all I did was basically take a old program that, um, uh, that, that they're still using today and um, um, just kind of go through it a little bit because of, you know, all of the automation engineers that, you know, were fluent in this, 15 or 20 years ago are getting close to retirement and um, unfortunately that information kind of goes with them so effectively here's your uh, RS Logix 5 and just to give you a basic overview you've got your IO configuration and it gives you a, a layout of you know, what each channel is doing on the PLC-5. If you come down here to Channel Configuration, you can click Status. We're not on line with it, so that's why nothing's there. Um, if, if we were on line with it, then this faulted um, column can be very handy trying to understand what's going on in the system. The, but let's say we want to get into the configuration a little bit more. Rather than clicking the plus, actually click on channel configuration and it comes up with a whole different screen. Sometimes that can be a little elusive straight out of the gate. So then if we go to each channel, so 1A is a DH, you know, is assigned to DH plus in this application. 1B is a remote IO channel as the scanner. Uh, 2A is remote I.O. as the scanner. And 2B is remote I.O. as the scanner. And we don't have um, Ethernet on this. We There's no Ethernet card installed on it. So what... Uh, let's just start with uh, these here. So what this is effectively telling us is... Okay, rack four, group zero, full size. So basically we're taking the full rack, and the full rack would be um, eight slots. Okay, and this is the I.O. words that are associated with rack four. So if you're going out on a service call or something like that, and you're trying to figure out, you know, if, if you're going through the logic and you get to an output 61, you know, blah, 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 bit this or that, you go to this table and now you know the, effectively the rack or node address where you would find that. Um, that tends to be a little elusive for a lot of people, but that is what it is. Um, and as you can see here, we've got um, um, different assignments. So like rack 13, you know, one quarter, like the first quarter of that rack is word 136 and 137. The next half of that rack, which is at group zero, is 
at 130 to 133. And at group four is another quarter. So if you look at this, the thirteen, so the first half of that rack is taken up here. The second half, the second, I'm sorry, quarter is at group four, and then the last quarter is at group six. So they can have different, um, you know, effectively you could have four quarter racks out there, you know, representing two cards um, of a eight slot rack. But where it gets tricky is it's not just remote I.O. that you'd run through here. They run drives off the off a of remote I.O. Uh, they run panel views off remote I.O. So it gets tricky understanding all of that. In our case, I'm going to take uh, just a quick shot at the panel view configuration here. So I have the panel builder program open and just to give you an idea so this one's in 32 so if I go to terminal setup and it is a Rio panel view if I go to com setup this is basically saying this is the PLC it's going to talk to uh, that's the name it's going to talk to and this is the terminal information so it's going to rack six so effectively we're, we're looking at six now if we go one step further into block transfer you've got uh, <coughs> this information before we get there though there's two tracks for this right there's the I.O. tract, and then there is the block transfer tract associated with this panel view. And so what I'm meaning is the programmer could have picked um, these uh, N211 values, you know, as, as write and read, or he could have picked... Let's see if I can find one here. He could have picked a tag address. And see now, so six, rack six covers 60 through 67. So he's got two different ways you can program. Um, by using the I.O. tables, your update rates are faster. If you use the block transfer um, routing, it's you can move more data, but um, the refresh rate is whatever you've triggered it as in the program. So let's go ahead and close that. So, for example, what do we say? Sixty through sixty-four. So like, uh, let's see what we're doing with that one. Okay, none of the 60s are used in this program. Now, just because it's not used as an output does not mean it couldn't be used as an input 60. It's another little tricky thing. Uh, that the slick world, I don't believe, had. Okay, so... Looks like they're just putting zero in that input. Then we go down to 61, nothing there. 62, nothing there. Maybe I should just go usage. Okay, I'm doing something here. And they're forcing. And as you can see, this program over the years has had updates done and the 
tagging didn't stay with it, but sometimes it's what can you do, right? So that kind of gives you an idea of how they can set it up. Now let's also look at the block transfer stuff. So block transfer right, and that ought to show me everything in the program. That's a block transfer. Um, and there's a couple different ways to do it, but a lot of times you'll see it where they got a timer, and then um, typically they'll cascade. It looks like this one's not a cascading setup. So, you know, if it's cascading, they'll go ahead and uh, enable this run, and then once the done bit turns on saying I've went out, I've got the information and I'm done, then the next one runs. And then once that goes out, gets its information, comes back, then the next one runs, then the next one runs. And then it loops on itself. It keeps the, um, it speeds up your communication by typically going that way. You don't end up with a whole bunch of messages all queued up together. Uh, waiting to be transferred over the network. So let's see if I can find. Let's see, we got 14, then we got file 31, 13. This is actually some PowerFlex drives uh, over remote IO. Um, Okay, so here we got rack three. And as we go down, rack four, rack six. Okay, so here we are at rack six. And we're going with group zero and group zero for the read and the write on this guy. And if we go into, back to our terminal set, I don't know, I can just go to communication setup. Okay, that kind of takes us there too. So communication setup. So this panel view is only using one and two. Um, So if we go back to it over here, so the panel view writes information from 0 through 63, word 63, and the, yeah, the PLC writes 0 through 63, and the PLC reads from the panel view from 70 to whatever an additional 64 words would be. That's kind of your range you're working with. Uh, then beyond that, you've got your block transfer. That's just a, a point that controls the block transfer itself and then the data file and the amount of words you're moving and whether that read runs all the time or just when you trigger it to run in the program. So hopefully that's somewhat helpful for the issue you might be having. Um, what, what I have noticed is after you've set all of this up in the panel view, your actual referencing, like this guy, is going to this address, right? It's not telling you, per se, that it's going through a block transfer to get there. Um, 
it must have been the migration over the years as it uh, got, you know, as they picked up, because it used to be very confusing because you'd have a block transfer group, and then if you're high and low, and it confusing. So I hope this is helpful. I wish you luck on the problem that got you wanting to watch this video. And I got a little experience with this, so feel free to uh, leave a comment or email me if, uh, if I can be of help. Have a good day.